Welcome to Electra Online. Now we're trying to find the square root of i. What is the square root of i? Well, it turns out that the square root of i is equal to the square root of the square root of negative 1. So what would that be equal to? Now we learned an interesting technique in the previous video when we took a complex number and we squared it. We doubled the angle, reference to the real axis, and we took the length from the origin to the original point and we square that length get, to get the length of the new point. Now when we're taking the square root, we work in reverse. The new angle will now be half the original angle and the length, the new length, will be the square root of the old length. Now let's find the number i on the real imaginary plane. Notice that it's right over here because i is simply equal to 0 for the real part plus 1 times i for the imaginary part. So it only has an imaginary part and so we place it right here on the imaginary axis a distance 1 away from the origin. Notice that the angle reference to the real axis is 90 degrees and that the distance from the origin to the point is equal to 1. So now we know that the square root of that will lie on the line that only has an angle of 45 degrees. So let's draw a line of 45 degrees, like this. So there's my 45 degree angle. And we know that the point, the square root of i, will be at some point on that line a distance 1 away from the origin because notice the new length will be the square root of the old length which is also equal to 1 because the original length was equal to 1. So it will be somewhere over here which means that the real part would be this value right here so this would be the, the real part and the imaginary part would be this value right here. At least that would be the magnitude of the imaginary part and the magnitude of the real part. So now how do we find the magnitude of these two? Well notice that we know that the new length, the length new, will be equal to the square root of the real part squared plus the length of the imaginary part. So these are the length of the real part and the length of the imaginary part and we know that that must be equal to 1. And we also know, since that's on a 45 degree angle, that these parts must be the same. We know that i must equal r, which means that we can replace i by r, so we know that the new length is equal to the square root of r squared plus r squared, and we know that's equal to 1, so that means that the square root of 2r squared must equal 1. If we now square both sides, we square the left side and we square the right side, that means that 2r squared must equal 1, or r squared must equal to 1 half, or r must equal 2, the square root of 1 half, which is equal to the square root of 2 over 4, because 1 half and 2 over 4 are the same, which means that this is equal to the square root of 2 over 2. And of course, as r is equal to that, and r is equal to i, that means that i must equal to the square root of 2 over 2 as well. Now these are the magnitude of the real part and the magnitude of the imaginary part of the square root of i. So therefore we know that the square root of i must equal to the real part, which is the square root of 2 over 2 plus the square root of 2 over 2 times i. And that is the square root of i. Now if you're not sure that that's correct, guess what we can do? We can square that number and see if we get back the original. So let's square the square root of 2 over 2 plus the square root of 2 over 2 times i. Let's square that. And of course whenever we square a binomial, that means it's the first term squared, so it would be the square root of 2 over 2 quantity squared plus twice the product of the 2, 2 times the square root of 2 over 2 times the square root of 2 over 2i plus the last term squared, which is the square root of 2 over 2i quantity squared. Let's put a line there so we don't get confused. Now this here, when we square that, that's equal to 2 over 4 plus 2 times 2 over 4 times i plus 
2 over 4 times i squared. Now, of course, 2 over 4 is the same as 1 half, so this can be written as 1 half plus 2 times 1 half i plus 1 half i squared, which is negative 1. And then if we simplify this, this is equal to 1 half plus i, because 2 times a half is 1, minus 1 half. And notice that this will cancel that, and this is simply equal to i. And so therefore, if we square this, and we get i, that means the square root of this must equal that, which means that this is correct. So notice that graphical method, where when we take the square root of a complex number, we take half the angle, and then we take the magnitude of that, and take the square root of the magnitude to find the point on that new line. That's how we can find the square root of a complex number, in this case, the square root of i. Now, you probably will say, well, how do you do that without doing it graphically? We'll show you how to do that later, but you must admit, this is pretty slick. That is how it's done.